I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore, and diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. If I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Errors are not in the art but in the artifices. I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. We built too many walls and not enough bridges. To every action there is always opposed an equal reaction. My powers are ordinary. Only my application brings me success. Genius is patience. Plato is my friend, Aristotle is my friend, but my greatest friend is truth. This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. I have a fundamental belief in the Bible as the word of God written by those who were inspired. I study the Bible daily. Atheism is so senseless. When I look at the solar system, I see the earth at the right distance from the sun to receive the proper amounts of heat and light. This did not happen by chance. In the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. Truth is ever to be found in simplicity and not in the multiplicity and confusion of things. Tact is the art of making a point without making an enemy. As a blind man has no idea of colors, so have we no idea of the manner by which the all-wise God perceives and understands all things. What goes up must come down. A man may imagine things that are false, but he can only understand things that are true, for if the things be false, the apprehension of them is not understanding. An object in motion tends to remain in motion along a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force. The proper method for inquiring after the properties of things is to deduce them from experiments. I do not love to be printed on every occasion, much less to be done and teased by foreigners about mathematical things or to be thought by our own people to be trifling away my time about them when I should be about the king's business. To me there has never been a higher source of earthly honor or distinction than that connected with advances in science. God is the same God, always and everywhere. He is omnipresent not virtually only, but also substantially, for virtue cannot subsist without substance. It is the weight, not numbers of experiments that is to be regarded. Gravity may put the planets into motion, but without the divine power, it could never put them into such a circulating motion as they have about the sun, and therefore, for this as well as other reasons, I am compelled to ascribe the frame of this system to an intelligent agent. If I have done the public any service, it is due to my patient thought. We are to admit no more causes of natural things than such as are both true and sufficient to explain their appearances. Fidelity and allegiance sworn to the king is only such a fidelity and obedience as is due to him by the law of the land, for were that faith and allegiance more than what the law requires, we would swear ourselves slaves in the king absolute, whereas, by the law, we are free men, notwithstanding those oaths. I have explained the phenomena of the heavens and of our sea by the force of gravity, but I have not yet assigned a cause to gravity. 
Opposite to godliness is atheism in profession and idolatry in practice. Atheism is so senseless and odious to mankind that it never had many professors. Are not rays of light very small bodies emitted from shining substances? If a projectile were deprived of the force of gravity, it would not be deflected toward the earth but would go off in a straight line into the heavens and do so with uniform motion, provided that the resistance of the air were removed. All variety of created objects which represent order and life in the universe could happen only by the willful reasoning of its original creator, whom I call Thay, Lord God. There are more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history. The moon gravitates towards the earth and by the force of gravity is continually drawn off from a rectilinear motion and retained in its orbit. Christ comes as a thief in the night and it is not for us to know the times and seasons which God hath put into his own breast. We account the scriptures of God to be the most sublime philosophy. The description of right lines and circles, upon which geometry is founded, belongs to mechanics. Geometry does not teach us to draw these lines, but requires them to be drawn. The center of the system of the world is immovable. To explain all nature is too difficult a task for any one man or even for any one age. It is much better to do a little with certainty and leave the rest for others that come after you. The ignis fatuus is a vapor shining without heat. Absolute space, in its own nature, without regard to anything external, remains always similar and immovable. Relative space is some movable dimension or measure of the absolute spaces, which our senses determine by its position to bodies, and which is vulgarly taken for a movable space. God in the beginning formed matter in solid, massy, hard, impenetrable, movable particles, of such sizes and figures, and with such other properties, and in such proportion to space, as most conduced to the end for which he formed them. Gravity must be caused by an agent acting constantly according to certain laws, but whether this agent be material or immaterial I have left to the consideration of my readers. Religion and philosophy are to be preserved distinct. We are not to introduce divine revelations into philosophy, nor philosophical opinions into religion. The motions which the planets now have could not spring from any natural cause alone, but were impressed by an intelligent agent. The word God usually signifies Lord, but every Lord is not a God. It is the dominion of a spiritual being which constitutes a God, a true, supreme, or imaginary dominion makes a true, supreme, or imaginary God. It may be that there is no such thing as an equable motion, whereby time may be accurately measured. All motions may be accelerated or retarded, but the true or equable progress of absolute time is liable to no change. The smaller the planets are, they are other things being equal, of so much the greater density, for so the powers of gravity on their several surfaces come nearer to equality. They are likewise other things being equal, of the greater density, as they are nearer to the sun. We are certainly not to relinquish the evidence of experiments for the sake of dreams and vain fictions of our own devising, nor are we to recede from the analogy of nature, which is wont to be simple and always consonant to itself.
It is reasonable that forces directed toward bodies depend on the nature and the quantity of matter of such bodies, as happens in the case of magnetic bodies. Nothing can be divided into more parts than it can possibly be constituted of. But matter, i.e. finite, cannot be constituted of infinite parts. In experimental philosophy, we are to look upon propositions inferred by general induction from phenomena as accurately or very nearly true, notwithstanding any contrary hypotheses that may be imagined, till such time as other phenomena occur by which they may either be made more accurate or liable to exceptions. It is indeed a matter of great difficulty to discover, and effectually to distinguish, the true motions of particular bodies from the apparent because the parts of that immovable space, in which those motions are performed, do by no means come under the observation of our senses. Hypotheses should be subservient only in explaining the properties of things but not assumed in determining them, unless so far as they may furnish experiments. The hypothesis of matters being at first evenly spread through the heavens is, in my opinion, inconsistent with the hypothesis of innate gravity without a supernatural power to reconcile them, and therefore, it infers a deity. Infinites, when considered absolutely without any restriction or limitation, are neither equal nor unequal, nor have any certain proportion one to another, and therefore, the principle that all infinites are equal is a precarious one. God made and governs the world invisibly, and has commanded us to love and worship him and no other God, to honor our parents and masters, and love our neighbors as ourselves, and to be temperate, just, and peaceable, and to be merciful even to brute beasts. Why there is one body in our system qualified to give light and heat to all the rest, I know no reason but because the author of the system thought it convenient, and why there is but one body of this kind, I know no reason, but because one was sufficient to warm and enlighten all the rest. God is a relative word and has a respect to servants, and deity is the dominion of God, not over his own body, as those imagine who fancy God to be the soul of the world, but over servants.